Today I'm going to tell you all about wedding invitation envelopes, what sizes they should be, what papers they should be made of, um, addressing and postage options, and so much more. So let's get into it. Hi, I'm Lainey. I make wedding invitations and you can shop all of those at the Design by Lainey Etsy shop. And I also teach people how to design and run an invitation business. So if you're looking to start your own stationery business, check out our monthly membership just for stationery designers called Stationery School. Today's topic is envelopes. So let's start with what kind of paper you want for your wedding invitation envelopes. We have a video all about different paper types where we kind of cover that you want something that's pretty thick. We always say 120 pounds which is a paper measurement type. But for envelopes, you actually want something a little bit thinner. See how this is thinner? Um, because if it's too thick, it's gonna add a lot of weight, which is gonna add postage, and it's not gonna bend well or um, accommodate all the pieces that you're putting inside of it. So you wanna go with like a 90 pound invitation envelope, but if you shop at like Michael's or online, sometimes those really cheap places can give you envelopes that feel kind of flimsy, like they're made out of copy paper. So we do want it to be something that's a little bit nicer. These are textured, they have an eggshell finish, which again, we talked about that in our paper types video, but it just makes it feel a little bit more luxurious um, as well as a little thicker than your typical envelopes. Um, those envelopes will also not handle a lot of really nice pens, calligraphy, some of them are difficult to print on. So just think about that when you're figuring out where to order your envelopes. Our most common size for wedding invitation envelopes is A7, which is for a five by seven card. It's actually five and a quarter by seven and a quarter inches. And then if you wanna do an outer envelope, which I'll talk about that in a second, you want something a little bit bigger. So this is called an A7 plus or an A7.5. So that's kind of what you'll search when you're looking for these. And what that means is that an A7 envelope can actually fit inside. Inner and outer envelopes is a little bit outdated or it's for really formal weddings. So what you'll do is you'll put the invitation in a smaller envelope, usually this A7 size. And then for the addressing, you'll just put the informal names. So like Aunt Sandy and Uncle Dave, whatever you call them is gonna go on the inner envelope. You also want that one to not be closed. And if you can order ungummed, so it doesn't even have the adhesive on there, that's technically the right way to do it. And then you'll put that full envelope inside a slightly larger one, which will have the formal addressing, which I'll have another video that I can link with more addressing tips, that is going to protect the entire thing. So then if you have an envelope liner or something, you would put that on the inner envelope so that it's fully protected, doesn't get torn when it's opening because it's not glued shut, etc. Again, it's a little outdated. Most people just go with the one envelope, um, but if you want to do inner envelopes, you'll have to pay attention to the sizes to make sure the larger one is big enough to fit the inner one, even with all your pieces inside. Another common size we use is called A9, which is five and a half by eight and a half inches. So it's a little bit larger and the card that goes inside is going to be larger as well. This is an upgrade that we do for um, a little bit more formal or luxurious weddings. And most RSVPs are in a four bar envelope. The card is 4.875 inches by three and a half inches, kind of very specific, but it's kind of a three and a half by five envelope is what you're gonna find. It's smaller. Um, I love to mix and match colors because envelopes are a really great way to add a pop of color um, without breaking the bank. Like if you try to print on color paper, it can be a little bit more expensive. For your RSVP envelopes, you'll also wanna make sure that you go ahead and put a forever stamp in the corner so that your guests don't have to find or go buy a stamp in order to send their RSVP back. A lot of the envelopes I showed you have envelope liners. It's my absolute favorite upgrade that you can add and just makes such a pop. You can have something like this, which is a pattern or something like this, which is a full image and you just get pieces of it within the envelope liner. I think that's so cool. The big thing to pay attention to here is that all companies will provide slightly different shaped envelopes because their dies are slightly different. So if you buy envelope liners, for instance, from my shop on Etsy, you'll need to make sure your envelopes are gonna fit that or purchase envelopes also from that same provider so they're the same size. There are three main options for envelope addressing and we have a video on etiquette and all things addressing that I'll link for you. First of all, of course, you can address them yourself. You wanna get a really nice pen. My favorite are Micron pens, uh, but give yourself time because your hand 
we'll probably get tired since we don't write as much as we used to these days. The other options are printed addressing or calligraphy. Calligraphy comes in a lot of different styles that are unique to the calligrapher. It's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but it gives it a really personalized, handmade, luxurious feel. Envelope printing, however, is one of my favorite ways to save costs because you can do things in so many different ways. For instance, I made a font out of my calligraphy that is printable, but looks a lot like handmade calligraphy. So that's really fun. We also have a tag on Instagram called no more boring envelopes. If you check out that hashtag, you'll see 12,000 posts of different designs that you can do on your envelopes. So the sky is the limit. You really don't have to stick to your typical address format, but you could add something like a frame stamp and design detail from your wedding invitation, a monogram, etc. When it comes to postage, you also have two options here, which is regular postage, anything that's at the post office right now, and also vintage postage, which you can find in a lot of different places. I check Etsy and I also have a video on applying vintage postage that you might find helpful. The big thing here is you want enough postage. Your typical invitation suite is going to be a forever stamp, which is currently 55 cents. And that's basically almost anything at the post office. But if you upgrade to things like thicker paper, more insert cards, envelope liners, uh, wax seals, ribbons, etc., then all of those things can affect postage and that cost will go up a little bit. If you get to a point where the envelope is no longer bendable, oh, usually they do it over the desk at the post office, then that's where you'll get into parcel rates, which are over a dollar, three dollars even sometimes per piece. So you wanna avoid that and not make your envelopes too thick that they can't be bent a little bit over the table. One question I get sometimes is how to stuff your envelopes. To be honest, do whatever the heck you want. Etiquette is really a little bit old fashioned and there are ways that you should do things, but in this case, it doesn't matter too much. I'll show you an example. This invitation has a piece that is landscape as well as a piece that is portrait. So the question is kind of how do you make those go in together? The landscape piece is obviously right side up. Don't put it upside down because that just kind of doesn't make sense. For the portrait pieces, I'm left-handed and it makes sense for me to pull things out this way, but I know most people are right-handed. So I typically put them in this way where you have your right hand grasping and your left hand is what's actually pulling the invitation out of the envelope because that's going to be more comfortable and the most people will be able to read it right when they take it out. But in a lot of cases, we just have fun design stacks. So as a custom designer, I really like to pay attention to how all the pieces are going to play together. So if you're using a wrap or if you're using the back of cards, pay attention to what they're all going to look like on top of each other. And then you can stack them according to whatever design element you want to focus on. Generally, you will want the largest piece in the back unless there's a band or a wrap tying everything together. Um, because if you pull this out, you might lose some little pieces down there and not ever get to them. I hope you answered all your questions about wedding invitation envelopes. Check out some of our other videos for more learning. Leave your questions in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them. And you can always shop all of our wedding invitations, of course, with lots of beautiful envelope options on Etsy with Design by Lainey.